think it's undeniable that science can be beautiful. In fact, almost every branch of science produces things that are just absolutely gorgeous. The images become even more powerful when you can recognize them. You know, why they look the colors that they do, why they have the shapes that they do. Every single one of them is mind-blowing. People have been studying the sky forever and ever. It's this great connection to the outside world, to the world beyond our experience. Whether a planet is habitable, or can host life, depends on a complex network of interactions among the planet, other planets in its solar system, and the star they orbit. The standard definition for a habitable planet is one that can sustain life for a significant period, based on our solar system, life requires liquid water, energy, and nutrients. A habitable zone is the region around a star where planets can receive the perfect amount of heat to maintain liquid water on their surfaces. Because Earth is in the habitable zone of the Sun, this arrangement has informed our understanding of habitability. However, as researchers discover unexpected environments that can sustain life, the requirements for habitability on exoplanets are being redefined. We're learning that even in the habitable zone, planets may not be habitable. Planets orbiting stars that produce high levels of X-ray and UV flux from flares and activity could end up stripped of their atmosphere, leading to a planet that may be warm but completely airless. average distance of 140 million miles, Mars is one of Earth's closest habitable neighbors. Mars is about half again as far from the Sun as Earth is, so it still has decent sunlight. It is a little cold, but we can warm it up. Its atmosphere is primarily CO2 with some nitrogen and argon and a few other trace elements, which means that we can grow plants on Mars just by compressing the atmosphere. Gravity on Mars is about 38% of that of Earth, so you would be able to lift heavy things and bound around. Musk's goal goes beyond mere aspiration. He's said a permanent colony on the red planet could sustain our species if all humanity is extinguished on Earth. By 2050, there will be 30,000 to 50,000 people who choose a one-way trip to Mars to begin a new life. By 2050, SpaceX will have the capability to transport 80,000 people to Mars every two years, resulting in a population of about a million by 2075. His early plans involve sending unmanned ships to the surface of Mars, then send people after that. Once these first missions land, they'd work to convert water and CO2 from the Mars surface into the liquid oxygen and methane fuel that powers the Starship. Following the initial flights, Musk wants to bring people en masse to build colonies and factories in order to make the planet self-sustaining. Based on current projections, about a third of all exoplanets are super-Earths, making them the most common type of exoplanet in the Milky Way. The nearest is only six light-years away from Earth. Researchers have come up with a list of the attributes that make a planet very conducive to life. Larger planets are more likely to be geologically active, a feature that scientists think would promote biological evolution. So, the most habitable planet would have roughly twice the mass of the Earth and be between 20% and 30% larger by volume. 
It would also have oceans that are shallow enough for light to stimulate life all the way to the seafloor and an average temperature of 77 degrees Fahrenheit. When it comes to detecting carbon-based chemicals in the atmospheres of other planets, it seems no telescope can match the James Webb Space Telescope. We now know that most stars have planets orbiting around them. As of today, we have confirmed the existence of 5,514 exoplanets in 4,107 planetary systems, with 928 systems having more than one planet. So roughly, 25% of stars host planetary systems containing two plus planets and, quite possibly, with moons going around them. These exoplanets are truly amazing, each different, each with its own composition and history. There are no two worlds exactly alike. Even when astronomers refer to Earth-like or Neptune-like planets, they mean worlds with masses and radii similar to Earth or Neptune, not duplicates of Earth or Neptune. Enormous variability ensues as planets form. Voyager in space exploration either of a pair of robotic U.S. interplanetary probes launched to observe and to transmit information to Earth about the giant planets of the outer solar system and the farthest reaches of the Sun's sphere of influence. The primary mission was the exploration of Jupiter and Saturn. After making a string of discoveries there, such as active volcanoes on Jupiter's moon Io and intricacies of Saturn's rings, the mission was extended. Voyager 2 went on to explore Uranus and Neptune, and is still the only spacecraft to have visited those outer planets. The adventurer's current mission, the Voyager Interstellar mission will explore the outermost edge of the Sun's domain. The possibility of extraterrestrial life has always fascinated humans. People have speculated about alien life on Mars and other nearby planets ever since we realized they were different from the other points of light in the night sky. Today even though our technological capabilities have allowed us to study those worlds up close and even peer at planets around other stars, we still don't have a concrete answer to the question of whether we are alone in the universe. To frame the question of whether alien life exists in another way, we might ask how likely it is that Earth is the only world in the universe where life has developed. But with billions of trillions of planets and moons in the universe, it's also very unlikely that Earth is the only home to intelligent life. Research that aims to discover extraterrestrial life has been ongoing since the mid-20th century, and the topic has been a point of interest in works of science fiction. To this day, no life outside of Earth has ever been found. And there's no evidence that alien life has ever visited or contacted our planet. We are not looking for alien algae, alien trilobites, or even alien dolphins. We're looking for some version, perhaps a better version, of ourselves. Although there's no evidence yet that aliens are out there, 